Okay, welcome to the fourth module in the ongoing saga of hidden Markov models. And this time we're going to look at a dynamic programming algorithm called the Viterbi algorithm. Uh, and as we saw last time, we wanted to, to solve the problem of a HMM as a parser. So basically we're given an input and then we want to find the most likely sequence of states. The sequence of states that has the highest probability according to the HMM. So all the probabilities are fixed. We're just trying to find the best sequence of states. In this case, um, in this sequence of slides, what I've done is abuse the notation a little bit. It should be x1 equals some state uh, and then x2 equals some state but instead I'm just calling them S1, S2, S3, and so on. So um, it just makes things a bit easier uh, to write out instead of uh, Xs and Ss. So I assume that you're familiar with that notation and now we can uh, use this more concise one. So each S sub T is one of the states in the HMM and our task is to find this argmax. And uh, in the last module, we saw that we could just enumerate all of the S1 through ST uh, sequences and then score them like uh, the argmax, uh, the sort of naive argmax model. Just create a list, sort the list according to the probability and take the first element of the list. Unfortunately, that was exponential time. So in this um, series of slides, we're going to look at an algorithm that does something better it creates a table, a dynamic programming table. Uh, we we'll call this table V for Viterbi and it's indexed by each state and each index uh, of the observation sequence. So for each state and for each um, prefix of the input uh, we're going to find the most likely sequence of states. So we're just like in edit distance we um, created a table that looked at prefixes uh, and then uh, sub prefixes led to longer prefixes and longer ones until we covered the whole input. In this case we're doing exactly the same thing. So let's take this input killer crazy crown problem. Um, so as we saw this if you just enumerate all of them we're going to get two to the four possible uh, state sequences. We want to do better than that. So this is our task. We want to find an assignment to S1, S2, S3, S4 that maximizes this probability. And we can think of a sub-problem, which is to look at a prefix of the original input. So just look at killer crazy clown. So now this is a bit easier. There are two to the three possibilities for this sequence of states. Um, so can we actually, if you assume that we've solved it for this uh, subsequence, uh, killer crazy clown, can we extend it to cover this one extra word problem? So we can do that fairly easily because in this particular HMM there's only two possible states. There's N or A, right? So S4 in this case can either be N or A and can't be anything else. So if you assign it to n and then you've already solved it for s1, s3, s3, then we're just taking uh, either n or a, take the max over these two possibilities. And that will solve our problem. Uh, and we can do that also for this substring. So killer crazy clown, we can do the same thing. We can uh, take this s3 and it can either be n or a. And so the max over these two must be giving us the the max uh, assignment for S3. So S1, S2, uh, we're assuming is done now recursively down the line. So if you put them together, we start with S1, S2. We assume we know what those maxes are and we're picking for S3 either an N or an A. Okay, if you pick an N, then in order to get S4 as an N, then we have to take a transition from this N to this N over here and then generate problem as a noun. 
So that's one possibility. And the other possibility is you start off as a A, so that could have been the max, and um, you go from A to N, and since N is what we're interested in here, and then generate a uh, problem as a noun. In both cases, we get a you know, problem being generated from the N state, but it could either come from A to N or N to N, and we're con covering both cases. So we're covering all our bases here and make sure that we don't miss any possibility. So it's not greedy, it's considering all the different possibilities of reaching a noun as state S4. And the uh, flip side is, what if S4 is an adjective? Well, then you could start from an N and go to an A, in which case you have a transition from N to A, and you generate problem as an adjective, or you start from an A and go to an A in which case you have this transition and this emission probability. Um, so that covers all our uh, possible cases. And um, the best score is just given by the max uh, between these two. So uh, S4 could either be uh, N or A, so we just take the max uh, over N or A. And that will give us a max S1 through S4 uh, for this probability. So that just lays out our recursive decomposition that will enable us to use a table. So now what we can do is use a table V um, and you get a, each state N or A and then for each symbol. Uh, so let's provide an index for each input symbol. So the first 01, 02, 03, 04 is just listed out uh, here. And if you want to find the probability of the best sequence for uh, this, um, that ends as a noun. So basically we're saying, what is the best way? We don't know what the best sequence for killer crazy is, but Assume we know uh, what that is, we can extend it one symbol to a noun, and then we can then extend it, we take this as a box, and extend it further, one more symbol, and maybe this could be a noun. So we consider all possibilities, uh, but uh, we're going to decompose it in this way. Okay, so putting it together, um, you can see that the getting to problem as a noun, what does that entail? Well, you could have gotten to clown as a noun and then you take a transition end to end and generate problem as a noun or you could have reached clown as an adjective, you take a transition from A to N and then since we're assuming problem is a noun in this particular entry, uh, we also still have emission as a noun. And there's an, and so just like there was N, we also calculate uh, one for A as well. And that's just a flip side. So you can start off with clown as a noun, take a transition to be an adjective, and then generate problem as an adjective. And the same here. Um, so this table is now recursively building up the notion of which alternative is, is the max. So notice that it's always taking the max between this and this. And for that, for reaching a noun, or for each an adjective, it's a max between this and this. It doesn't greedily pick either a noun or adjective. It considers all possibilities. And the best score overall, then, for the input uh, is the max between whether it is is it better uh, getting a better score as a noun uh, or adjective as the last uh, symbol problem and to extract the best sequence of states we backtrack it's the same trick as getting the alignments from the minimum added distance matrix so we get if we get for example we get uh, noun as a max then we go back and say, well, where did it come from? Did it come from uh, a 
v n comma 3 which one was the winner in this max or was it v a comma 3 if the winner was a comma 3 then the last two sequence would be n a right and then we go back all the way to the start we get a sequence uh, of states okay so here's what the algorithm pseudocode looks like you have an input observation sequence we want to find this sequence of states we initialize our table with the start state so you can start at state q and generate the observation in, in observation uh, symbol 1 and then we can do this loop over the rest of the symbols increasing the prefix right from the first prefix is size 1 and then 2 and 3 4 and so on until we get to capital T and um, here is exactly what we did in the previous slide which is to take each state Q prime assume that we're ending in Q prime and then how did we get there well there could be um, different possibilities um, so um, oh sorry I misspoke we assuming we're ending in Q not Q prime and then we look at every possible Q prime and how I could get to Q from Q prime and that means that you get a transition from Q prime to Q and then you emit what's at the current uh, position for Q uh, using the emission probability so that's just uh, exactly what we worked out in the previous slides and then after the loop terminates the best score is the max and the last uh, and the last observation symbol so that's the only time we compare is it better to end in you know one of which one of these states is actually the, the best at the end so let's just look at the algorithm animated in this way so the Viterbi table looks like um, this table below here so the Viterbi algorithm is building this table right and so what we start with is in this position here what do we say we say well how likely is it to start so that's pi a times um, what is the probability of generating killer from this state A? It turns out to be zero. Um, and so this uh, is going to be B of A killer, right? So this product is going to be what we enter into this cell over here. Uh, so that's, uh, as we know already, it's, it's going to be zero. Um, now, the other possibility is you start at a noun, so this pi sub n times killer is a noun, so that's 0 0.75 times 0 0.3, and um, when you do that, you get 0 0.225. Okay, so now comes the interesting part. Um, now we've done the prefix of length one, we want to do prefix of length two. Um, so we know that crazy is going to be an adjective so let's just look at this cell over here okay so how do I get to this cell well um, there's two possibilities one is you start from this cell over here and get to this cell so what that means is from an adjective you go to an adjective so killer as an adjective goes to crazy as an adjective or I can go this way so you start off with uh, killer as a noun and then go to crazy as an adjective. So let's work this one out because this is the one that looks more promising. So we look at this value in this table. We just look it up. So that's killer as a noun. Now if I start as a noun, I want to go to an adjective. That's what is the probability of an adjective given a noun? We'll look that up in the table and then we generate crazy as an adjective which happens to be one so we multiply this probability with this probability with this probability that's one option okay uh, so that's what this arc is about so that's scoring this arc there's another possibility which is 
you start from here and you go and take uh, adjective to an adjective and then you generate uh, crazy as an adjective and we know that that's going to be zero because you're multiplying this with this with this that's going to be zero so in the competition we take the max between these two uh, this one is going to win so this path going up here is the one that wins um, and the same thing is done for the other cell so the cell where crazy is a noun and we know that's not going to work because crazy as a noun gets probability zero so whatever you multiply with that is going to get zero anyway so that's the winning one and remember the winning one comes from here this time um, and the other one is going to be zero now the next cell this is going to be zero because clown as a adjective is going to get zero and let's look at uh, one more case so in this case you have either you can go from a noun to a noun or adjective to a noun and we know that this is going to be zero so that's going to lose but what we do is take this cell the value from this cell and then say what's the probability of going to a noun given an adjective that looks pretty good and then the probability of generating clown as a noun state is 0.4 so that's going to be this probability times this probability times this probability um, and that goes into that cell over there it's 0 0.045 and we do the same thing here uh, all so basically each cell is looking at every possible state in the previous uh, index and then extending it uh, by one uh, so covering one more uh, element in the prefix until you're done with the string and when you're done with the string you get you basically take the max between these two and that's going to be this one so that says problem is going to be a noun and now we look at where does this come from which one was the max from these two possibilities well it's got to be this one and then this asks the question what is the max between these two possibilities it's going to be this one and what's the max between uh, these two possibilities well it's got to be this one so if you write out so that's backtracking and so you would say well killer is a noun a crazy is an adjective clown is a noun problem is a noun and that's how you get the best sequence of states using the Viterbi algorithm